Hello everyone. In today's video, I wanted to review the Vapor Blast nozzle that uh, is commonly purchased on eBay. That's where I purchased mine. The model that I have came with a 8 millimeter boron tip inside. The reason they use these materials is that they don't wear out quickly. They take a long time, so many hours of blasting before they wear out. You can possibly find different diameter openings of these boron tips and if you're testing you don't want to be spending a whole lot of money on a lot of tips that may or may not work for you one thing that would be great is if you could use the harbor freight sandblast tips inside of your ebay nozzle so i thought that would be a pretty cool experiment to try to to play around with there's a YouTuber, Armory Enterprises, that's out there that does a lot of work with these vapor blast nozzles. He builds his own using uh, some pipe fittings. You may want to check out his channel. He's got a lot of good, useful information. I've learned a lot from watching his YouTube videos. But one thing that I haven't seen covered is using the, the eBay nozzle with the Harbor Freight inserts. So here's a Harbor Freight insert. This fits in the little sandblasting gun that comes with the Harbor Freight cabinet. And you can buy a set of four in the four different sizes for just for about $6 plus tax. Very inexpensive. These are made of ceramic, so they will last a long time. They're inexpensive to replace. But if you're going to be doing some testing and you're not sure what nozzle is going to work best for your setup, then getting a variety of different sizes and trying each one to figure out which one is going to work best would be awesome if you could do it. Now, one thing that's difficult to do is there's no way to use this insert with this plastic sleeve that comes on the eBay Vapor Blast nozzle. And I believe this boron tip is glued or pressed in here because I can't get it out. I've tried uh, pushing it out and I don't want to stick a sharp tool in there and break it but I, it, it's it's stuck in there it won't come out of there so what i wound up doing is i decided to 3d print my own little uh nozzle sleeve so here we have a little 3d printed nozzle sleeve it's made out of just regular pla so don't leave it out in the sun because it, won't, it doesn't do well with heat and I'm, i printed it using 22 percent ink fill so it's not totally solid but again there's not going to be any media really that's going to be passing through this section of it what we're going to be doing is we can use the harbor freight inserts along with a, another little 3d part here so this will this will uh, allow us to put this tip inside of this sleeve these are they must come out of some kind of a mold or something because they're not all exactly the same you can measure this one in, in three different places and it's different diameters and they're, they're a little bit wonky so you do have to allow some space for these if you're going to decide to do something like this so what i would recommend if you're going to test these harbor freight nozzles in this 3d printed sleeve and i'll include the stl files to all of these in my description so if you guys have a 3d printer at home feel free to download them and print them up and try them out for yourself if you're going to print this particular uh, part I recommend printing it like this. So stand it up in Cura like this. Make sure that you have uh, supports down to the to the bed, and uh, just a skirt will be fine. You don't need to do the brim or a raft or anything else. Just a skirt, just to clean out the nozzle, is all that I used, and it worked out great. And then this little uh, hexagonal pattern here, you just break this all off, and then and then free the the center part from the little. Uh, the little bridges but anyhow getting back to this uh, to this thing so once you uh find the the nozzle that works best for you then you can go ahead and try to get this part in a boron insert with the standard outside uh, plastic part that will screw into that gun but for testing purposes this probably would work out pretty well and uh, i don't have a 10 millimeter nozzle however i did have some comments on youtube saying hey man why don't you try the 10 millimeter tip it works a lot better than the 8 millimeter so what i decided to do is i went ahead and just printed one up now how long this is going to last i don't know 
but th this will press in here and, and it presses in here i mean tight it, once it goes in it it's hard to get out so i don't need to glue this one or anything it will just work just the way that it is so let's go ahead and load this on the gun we'll put the uh, vapor blast nozzle in the cabinet and clean up a pressure washer carburetor that I have that won't start properly. All right, guys, if you like the content that I've been putting out, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me some comments. Share the videos if you would. And turn on your notification bells. That way, as I put out these videos and you guys are learning about vapor blasting, you guys will be the first to know. All right, without further ado, let's get to testing. And before I get started, let's take a real good look at it. And it looks clean because I, I did this carburetor about a couple years ago but let's go ahead and load it back up in the machine we'll touch it up this is the first time that i used the vapor blast cabinet since i upgraded the led lighting replaced uh, the two panes of glass for the single quarter inch and this carburetor that i have currently in the cabinet was the first item that i vapor blasted this is when I was using the small compressor and my system wasn't working properly. Now I got it working exactly the way it should be. And this will be the first test of the 10 millimeter 3D printed nozzle I currently have on the end of the vapor blast uh, gun. So let's get started.
Okay, this is how it turned out. You can see we gave it a nice little refresher. Looks a lot better than it did.